Hey everyone, and welcome back to my Create Mod series. Let's jump into it. Today is a brand new day inside of our world, and uh, as you probably saw from the intro, we've decided to create these little lampposts that are starting to create some light uh, a lot better than just torches placed everywhere, kind of throughout our path. And as our path continues, I'll probably just build these guys as well, because I'm trying to make it so these things actually connect together properly and look a lot better and more like a village. Uh, which we're, we're kind of going into that direction, and these continue through the entirety of the village that we've built so far. Now, uh, I will credit this design in the description, found it on Pinterest, thought it would, was, it would be perfect for basically our builds that we're doing, so not my design, really simple, but I'll credit it inside of the description. Now today, I figured we should try to take a stab at the ore processing system, so we're going to try to dedicate this entire episode to ore processing. Uh, and that means that we're going to need to find a way to get our mechanical crafters set up in some type of building, which will probably be around in this area. And then we're going to hopefully make maybe a second building, or even in the first building, an area to just process ores. Uh, and then the idea is, is that we'll have this entire process set up somewhat in this area. And then I'm hoping with either this ravine down here, as you can see, uh, or one of the other several ravines that are off in this direction to be able to set up like a minecart system that you process ores, you throw it in here, it's gonna be sent all the way up into our like ore processing room up here, pulls the items out of the minecart, and then processes them. Or even if it doesn't pull them out of the minecart, at least it stops the minecart up here for me to manually take them out and process them when I need to. Uh, which I thought would be really cool. Something that I've not seen, I don't think anyone really do in Create Mod, uh, or at least make it try to look nice. The idea is that we get that up and running, and we're gonna go ahead and see uh, what we could do today. So to start off, let's go ahead and work on getting the mechanical crafters up and running. Let's work on uh, building a building for that and we'll come back to our discussion. All right, and we are back. And honestly, I might have gotten a little sidetracked. However, I've still accomplished what I have told you guys that I would do. Uh, I took some time. I honestly took like a day uh, to just kind of figure out what I wanted to design, something big that would hold a mechanical crafter, but then also fit such a large machine. And I figured a working clock tower would be actually the best way, which you can see is moving. Uh, I will say that the hands of the clock tower is a little weird. I couldn't figure out a certain block to like make it look nice. Uh, if you have any recommendations, let me know in the comments. But for now, we have a working clock tower that actually spins through time, which is pretty cool, um, as you can see. And I'll I'll show the basis or explain the basis of how that works in a second. But uh, to access our clock tower, there are doors on all four sides of it. But the main access is we go through our little tunnel that we have created. And then up the side, which I'm going to refine out uh, probably between now and the next episode, uh, we're going to go ahead and use this door as our main access into into our clock tower. And once again, the clock is on all four sides and it works on all four sides, which is pretty awesome. So once we're inside, uh, you can see that we have this power strip that's currently going uh, through the ground. This is so we actually power the upstairs. Uh, I might do something to make this look like this is a pillar or something like that to get rid of this. But for now, this powers the upstairs, which powers the clock tower. The way that this clock tower works is these clockwork bearings. Uh, which are pretty simple to craft. I'm definitely going to go over this whole entire process probably again in another episode or something, uh, but I'll probably cut it from this episode. But they're basically a clockwork bearing. You attach blocks to it with a little bit of glue, and then from there, you can actually go ahead and make a working clock out of any blocks that you want to use, which is pretty cool. And then inside of here, as you can see, is our gigantic mechanical crafters, which are also hiddenly powered. As you can see, this is an andesite-encased cogwheel, so it's covering the cogwheel, and the cogwheel is actually running, and then running to this mechanical crafter set up here, which is pretty awesome. So theoretically now, we grab our andesite alloy, our stone, and our oak planks, and we place these all in here. You'll see it'll turn gold, and it should go ahead and craft for us. And uh, all of this power is being routed 
uh, downstairs. I believe I routed this to the windmill. I think that's the closest thing to us. Uh, but it's all just underground for now. I didn't want to run the power through the through everything. But right there, we get a pair of giants. And we now have crushing wheels, which is a perfect setup for us to now begin our ore processing system. All right, so now we can return over here to our lovely blacksmith that we have created. Now, our blacksmith is somewhere that I am going to place crushing wheels eventually, probably somewhere in here. We're just like, oh, I want to manually crush something. Here we go. But I definitely want like an ore processing style uh, building. And I don't know what that would be because we do technically have a blacksmith and technically the blacksmith would probably be the ore processor. So I'm going to try to do some research probably through Pinterest and stuff like that and come up with some building design for kind of this area that would actually do our automated ore processing. Hey everyone, uh, I'm basically just doing an overlay over this video that you're watching right here because between the past clip that you just saw of the time lapse and the next clip, uh, I was pretty under the weather and you could hear it probably still in my voice. You'll probably hear it in the next clip uh, that I just I didn't have a voice. So I decided to keep working on this thing so I could keep uh, working on this content to get this video out sooner for you guys. So a lot of the stuff was built off camera. And then I really didn't like the time lapse videos of uh, building the ore processing section of this building. Uh, I'm going to run through the entire thing in the next clip, but I just want to say uh, I apologize for that. But also, I don't think there was really another option between me being sick and just I couldn't get the time lapse to work correctly. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments of any uh, tips and tricks you have for time lapses. But I think I'm just going to bring you over to the next clip. And uh, sorry for the interruption. All right, so I'm probably going to cut that entire time lapse and I'm going to do it on purpose because uh, the amount of builds and rebuilds and builds and rebuilds uh, literally took more than a day to just get this thing to look half decent, I guess. Um, and I've kind of done my best to hide certain parts of it that are just needed for this to be automatic. But a uh, quick thing to note is if we type in uh, like iron ore, we can use our ore processing system by using fortune. And then from fortune, we can go ahead and like kind of multiply our ores a little bit, basically kind of just getting more XP. Fortune as a whole is just better than most of the stuff, which is definitely a big change in these past couple updates. Uh, but that is kind of the basis of where this all begins. So to give you an idea of how this system works, uh, we're going to start by walking through the system and then we'll do a quick run through of actually the iron ore that I have processing through our system. Now, uh, below this contraption here of our chutes, we actually have these items pushing up and going through these chutes and going into our barrel here. Now, just bear with me because I haven't shown that down below, but just know that the items come from this chute. They then go through, get pressed. That takes nine raw iron and puts it into a raw iron block, I believe it's what it's called. Yeah, a block of raw iron, which allows us to then process nine at a time, which is really nice. So you can see that we're not losing any, but we're also getting a chance at nine nuggets of experience. So we can get a lot of experience from this. Now, once they've been pressed, they go onto this weighted ejector here, and they actually get launched up through the roof, come back down, fall into the crushing wheel, and these crushing wheels uh, crush it to turn into that XP and stuff like that. And they all sit on top of this depot in the time being. This mechanical arm then picks up this depot, uh, or the items on the depot, and place them onto this depot, where they're washed. Now this shows that we can get uh, nine iron nuggets per crushed iron ore with a bonus of redstone. Uh, I believe there's gunpowder, nether quartz, and uh, there's a fourth one. I think it's clay. So depending on the ores that are in here, we get a bonus item from doing this process. So still you're seeing that we didn't really make any progress of gaining more iron, but the fortune in the beginning has actually given us more iron in this process. But we're getting these extra benefits of like tons of XP, we're getting like redstone and gunpowder and things like that that we can kind of use in other uh, odds and ends in the future. Now, depending on the items that are on top of this depot, if it is XP, it ends up getting placed into this brass funnel that connects to this barrel, where it ends up placing the nuggets of experience in there for us. So we can go ahead and grab our nuggets of experience after we collected some, use it all, and go ahead and get our XP. Now, if it ends up being something else besides XP, it waits here to go ahead and get washed, and then it passes through the belt. Now, this belt right below this section actually has a hidden chute that pulls out the redstone, the nether quartz, the gunpowder, and the clay, 
So we don't have that going through the rest of our system, which I'll show off on how I've hid that uh, after this. Now the rest of it goes back into a press and presses into an ingot and the ingot goes down into this barrel just like so. So that's how we can actually get from the crushed iron variant, which we then take like a step back uh, to then go into like a block and then crush it again. And it's a weird contraption that allows us to get some excess with a ton of XP, which is really nice. Now, if we go downstairs, I can actually show you um, my hidden area. So behind this stone brick stair is actually the hidden chute that shoots down those items of the filter and places it in here. So you can see there's redstone. Uh, I've done my best to make this like a pillar and kind of just hide it from what this is. But this barrel actually holds all of our like excess items. So we can grab that from time to time. And then this is actually an encased fan blowing into a bunch of chutes which will push our items up. So now I can actually show you the demo by throwing our raw iron on here. You'll see it'll fly up the chutes. So if we run upstairs, just like so, you'll see that it will go into our chest, start to go into our press right here, and eventually it will press down. It will go into our weighted ejector, shoot down into the crushing wheels. You'll see it starts to begin to process. If we go over here, you can see it is now uh, processing right here of washing. And you'll see some of it will actually go into this belt. You can see it's made iron and some redstone. The iron will be pressed and go into that barrel. The redstone is waiting its turn until it gets to this spot in the belt and then it will actually get pulled out of the chute. As you can see, the iron will keep processing. This will place the XP here. That activates that mechanical arm, which places it inside of this barrel. And then at the very end, we've now got five nuggets of experience and we got a bunch of iron, all from just a simple little process. And then we also got our extra probably redstone placed into this barrel right here. So we got some little extra redstone for mining iron. And I think that's going to be it for this episode. We did an absolute ton in this episode. We built an entire clock tower. We built basically an ore processing area as well. It has been a journey. So if you enjoyed this episode, drop a like, make sure to subscribe. I apologize for the delay on this episode. It's just been an absolute ton of work. Uh, but thank you so much. And I'll see you guys all in the next one.